for the moment, I, I actually like to stick to the string theory and ask a couple of philosophical questions. And so one of them, I mean, I, I before we talked, I, I jotted down just some potential pro string theory arguments, some of which are, are philosophical, because I've had a, a number of conversations on the show with people like Juan Maldacena and Andy Strominger and uh, Eric Verlinda about it. So it's it's just on and my let mind. Let me interject that my, my, I think my book, Hiding in the Mirror, is very optimistic. I mean, it really explains why string theory is motivated. But anyway, go on. Mm-hmm. One problem that I, I don't know, it's, it's just an intuitive prejudice it, with quantum mechanics is that it has point particles. And I like the idea of string theory replacing them with little strings. Do you find point particles at all disturbing to admit into the furniture of the universe? No, because they're not really, but I mean, because it's, it, they're not really. <laughs> yes and no. Look, I mean, when you get to infinitesimal things, obviously something is going to cut that off. Things aren't infinitesimally small. They're not infinitely small. There's going to be some effects that are going to cut off that that singularity. I don't think, I, I, I think as string theorists have learned, strings are not the fundamental objects in string theory anymore. It's brains. And so I don't even know what the fundamental objects are, but I don't, I don't find, I don't find little strings any less or any more physically plausible than fundamental point particles. Because really what string theory does, it's a, it's a lot of fancy mathematics, and and, um, and to be fair, much of which I, I don't even comprehend. Um, but the fundamental idea, the reason it works, is it it, it just gives you a cutoff. Instead of being, instead of going, being I mean, infinitely small, string theory has this thing called duality. So there's a smallest size. And, uh, and it's a, there's a duality. So when you go to smaller scales, it's equivalent to something at larger scales. So it's it's just like saying, well, I I I, I there is a smallest size be- below which things don't exist. And if I said that, I could say that for point particles, and and it would be just and they'd be just as finite. The 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 the, the conclusions that came about would be just as finite as they are in string theory. Mm-hmm. Just to clarify something you said about strings not being the sort of fundamental fundamental particles in, in string theory or M theory. Is it yeah. the case that they're not fundamental or just that there are multiple fundamental things? Well, yeah. I mean, look, it, well, it, it, yeah. Okay. There are multiple fundamentals. One, one, the reason it's called M theory is you don't even know what the theory is a theory of. Mm-hmm. And, my former colleague and friend, Joe Polchinski, before he died, was one of the people who <coughs> first recognized that brains, that, that, that something called brains, are probably fundamental to understanding the mathematics of string theory. And these brain-like objects are, I think, what what now are our, our greatest interest. But, but what are the ultimate variables of the theory and, and what it describes? I, I think, I, I, look, I may... Some people may correct me here, but I, I think it, at this point, it, no one knows. It's it's uh, a crapshoot, and it's it's full of fascinating ideas and objects and mathematics, and 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 the practitioners are fascinated by it, and also they're true believers, which you sort of have to be if you're working for thirty years. The good thing is those of them who are scientists, and not all of them are. And by that I mean not scientists in the true spirit of science. Those of them that are scientists would be willing to drop it. Like yesterday's newspaper, if it actually made a prediction that was wrong, so they're sci- But most of them who are doing it are scientists in that true sense. They they're true believers. They work on it. They're convinced it's right. But happily, if it were proved to be wrong, they'd throw it out. So I I give them the benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I'm not a string theorist, so I will also probably be uh, open to correction here. But my understanding is that the, in M theory there is this web of dualities where uh, one uh, fundamental or there's a smallest length and in, in, of one string in one theory and it can be sort of translated into a, a larger string in another yeah, string theory. Yeah, there's a scale below which you can't go because everything smaller right. than it is equivalent to larger. So effectively, it means like the physics has a smaller scale. The string is associated with the string tension. Mm-hmm. In the, and in the but what I was going to say is that in th- this leads to space not really being 
continuous. There is this smallest scale, and you said that's kind of why it works for quantizing gravity in in some respects. But that's not the case for quantum field theory, where space is continuous, and that's why we have these point particles. And I'm wondering if the continuity of space, as opposed to the discreteness of being space, is is problematic for you at all? Well, it is. That uh, and but quantum field theory isn't a theory of gravity. It's not a theory of space. It's a theory of fields within space. But if you put a cutoff, if we say there's a smaller scale, then quantum field theory works very well and doesn't produce infinities. Um, but that's that you have to impose that right. It's arbitrary. Outside. And and um, and but you know that's the problem. Quantum field theory. But it's okay. We understand the world in terms of effective theories now. There is no fundamental theory. Some think theorists may think they have it, but up to that point, there's no fundamental theory that's true. None of the theories we have now are absolutely true. They're all effective theories. And that so and and we all expect that at some high scale of energy and small scale of distance that those theories will be modified. The problems with quantum field theory, and they're no problems, but the the, the where it looks like they're problems, the infinities arise from extrapolating the theory to a domain where you know it's not true. But the great thing is the theories that make sense have results that are independent of the nonsense at that at, at, at that scale that we know things are wrong. That's called renormalizability. You, you can, throw, you can li- li- effectively get rid of those infinities in a way that they don't affect any of the predictions of the theory at, at low energy scales. It's, and it was a mystery to... to, to Feynman, who used it to you know, develop a way to understand normalizability and get a sensible theory of of quantum electrodynamics, and he thought it was like some magic box. And I, I assume at the end of his life he knew. I, I talked to him near them, but I, I but certainly this, it, you know, of course he knew. But in when he got the Nobel Prize, he talked about this is just some magic prescription that has no we don't understand it, but we do understand it now. We understand it was Ken Wilson and others. Who helped us understand what we now call effective theories, and that the whole world is an effective theory. There's no none of the theories we have are fundamental. That doesn't bother us. Mm-hmm. Well, the 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 last uh, sort of philosophical question in this this area that I'll ask you is, I mean, in our in our macroscopic picture of the world, we see it as kind of populated by objects, definite objects. We don't have this idea of invisible forces, invisible fields. And my understanding is that in quantum field theory, the fields are sort of the fundamental objects and what we measure as particles are just perturbations in the field. Whereas of the fields, yeah. The fields yeah. are fundamental. They're quantum fields. And what that tells you is that, is a field gives you the probability of creating a particle mm-hmm. uh, in a given place. And, mm-hmm. and that's and so that that's the fundamental feat the fundamental variable is the probability of creating or destroying particles here or there. And that's what quantum fields are. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what I was going, I was going to contrast this with string or M theory where uh, vibrations of, of brains or strings kind of, those are what's fundamental. And then the fields are just emergent. They're well, effective I, descriptions. Well, I don't know they're emer- any more emergent. They're, the ex- they're, particles are excitations of quantum fields, fundamental quantum excitations of quantum fields. String theory, the strings are quantized and their and their modes are quantized and particles are excitations are of those you know are, are quantized modes of a string so i don't really see anything fundamentally if we not a quantized mode of a of a field but but i mean in in spirit it's exactly the same thing to me i guess okay. maybe a limitation of my thinking but i don't really see any any um any real difference um uh Except, well, the real difference is that it's an excitation of an object, right? One case, but it's a mathematical object. I mean, strings may not even exist. They may be, ma- you know, we often create mathematical crutches, and many times people thought uh, Faraday thought his fields, and he invented the idea of fields, even though he was an experimentalist. And he thought they were a crutch that allowed him to, because he couldn't do the mathematics, the algebra, without it. And then, you know, Delman invented quarks, but he also thought they were hypothetical, just mathematical tools that helped you understand some basic premise of of strongly interacting particles. But they turned out to be real. Um, and strings, if they if that theory does apply to nature, may be real, or they could just be they could just be mathematical constructs that help you um, 
understand the mathematics of what's going on. Anyway, but the bottom line is you're right. There's one, the str strings are objects, and when they're excited, they create different particles. Fields are not objects it, per se. They're, they're mathematical constructs. But we also think they correspond to things in reality. I guess it's again, it's full of it's, it's semantics, and mm -hmm. I don't like to get involved in semantics if I can help it. One of the problems of cosmo of philosophy. Mm -hmm.